LPI Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. It's R and R on sports with Uncle Howard, Howard Robertson. His legacy is terrible with regard to the NBA. Jennifer Conroy, Anna Kornikova. She's terrible, but how much in endorsements did she have up until Serena? Now and the magnificent Larry Robinson. Coaching changes. I mean, Scott Skiles just broke out and said, "I'm out." It's R and R on sports. Hello and welcome to a little R and R on sports. I'm Howard Robertson. And I'm Jennifer Conroy. And I am the fantastic, the, the amazing, amazing, the extraordinary, the, the super califragilistic Larry Robinson. What's up, America? How y'all doing today? The extra Woo! silly. <laughs> yes. The extra, extra. How is everyone Why y'all this like morning? It, man. I mean, it's Saturday morning and y'all need quit to. Quit picking your nose. Will you please <laughs> quit digging in your man, nose? Man, see, there you go lying they can't, and stuff, man. Your nose going to start growing. Hey, your nose hey, going to start Jen, growing. Jen, you know it's the Pinocchio effect. Was I lying? Tell America if I was lying or not. Don't the pay boy no had his attention hand to all up in his nose. I might have lost <laughs> and his nose is that big, it can get up in there. But anyway, how you all doing? <laughs> Listen, seems to be a lot of contention in Louisville about the Heisman oh, Trophy man. winner's speech. I feel bad. Yeah. Lamar yeah. Jackson oh, is the new Heisman oh, Trophy snap. winner. Oh, oh snap. snap. <laughs> there man. seems to be some contention uh in Louisville because I don't know how much how prepared he, wasn't the he most was eloquent brother for in the, the world. speech. No. Should that matter? No, it shouldn't. He's a 19-year-old kid. His job is to play football. I think his speech, while not polished, was genuine and from the heart. And you could tell the kid was nervous. He was scared. I think the fact that he was able to be composed at 19 years old, speaking to the world, um, he, he had a prepared speech. I just think the he guy was, was just excited. He, I think he was happy. I think he was humbled. All of that, man. I, mean, I think he. Was, I think he was a phenomenal representation a for the city of Louisville and, and the university. Do we put too much baggage on um, young athletes in terms of being articulate because we come? From um, there's a background uh, and a and a heritage, if you will, of uh, African American athletes who weren't the most articulate in the world weren't at, had, weren't at some point the most educated. And uh, my dad used to tell me about Joe Lewis's standard win speech. What was that? I, another lucky night. I glad I win. <laughs> Well, I say this. And, and I think it's ridiculous. Too much pressure no, or baggage no. I think on, on young players. I think the players are probably in pro- the direction of the of the upset and anger that people uh, express is inaccurately placed. I think what we need to be looking at is these school systems. Because a lot of these kids are coming from urban school systems yeah. that aren't preparing them and passing them along because they are athletes yep. instead of giving them the tools necessary to represent themselves, their family, but that's and how the they schools. Get, that's how they get to college. So does U of L have a? Does Louisville have? Uh, some role in this? I Absolutely. Mean, he's representing Absolutely. them, so should they have prepared him better? One of, one of the guys one of the guys said point blankly, it was actually a friend of mine from high school who said that you know, you've been knowing for six months that he was, he was definitely going to be invited to New York for the Heisman Trophy candidacy, but then on top of that, you knew that he'd probably be talking. Why not and prepare they him? They also could have spent time preparing him. He did have a prepared speech. And in that moment, to be so overcome with emotion and to be in front of all of those people. Yeah, I'm sure. What do you keep saying? Oh, snap. Oh, he kept, oh, my oh, God, snap, oh, snap. And he snap, said, man. dang. And he was like, oh, my I'm God. Just, I'm, I'm just, just so trying to figure out the last here. time anybody said snap. Uh, oh snap! I, I think he was. I think that was like that was like a that was like so five years talking. ago. That was like five years oh, ago. Snap! The brother must have went into a, so, a but time you know what? war. Kudos to him for keeping so it clean. So as they say, his speech was not on bleak. <laughs> it's fleek, man. Fleek. Oh, fleek! It's fleek, not bleak. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, and that's kind of old too. So, uh, yeah. so don't try to be. That's cool. not just, old. No, nah, man. Me? Just, just, just stay in your era. It's not old. Stay in your era. Are you having a Phil Jackson moment where all you can remember? See, that's. We mess up. Yeah. When old dudes start trying to be hip, that's when we mess up. Bleak. But hey, we got a great show. We're going to be we back. Do. We're going to let you get your laugh on uh-huh. as usual. And we'll be back on the other side of this. Hey, this is Dr. 
Tom DeJay. Hi, this is Rika Ketchy. This is John Hollinger, Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Memphis Grizzlies. Tim Brown, NFL Hall of Fame and Chuck T. You are listening to R&R on Sports. Hello, how may I help you? Yes, I'd like to apply for my passport. Great, let's start with your name, height, and weight. Uh, that would be uh, Colin Kaepernick, 6'4", 230. And your nationality, sir? Uh, American. Okay, I'm going to need to check one of the following ethnic boxes for you. Are you white, whitish, cracker, African American, black, blackish, negro, colored, multiracial, biracial, or other? I'm African American. Uh, are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Okay, I'm going to need you to step behind the line and wait just a minute, please. Why? It's protocol, sir. Now I'm going to need you to step back behind the line. Um, uh, I need Kawane Leroy Brown to report to Cubicle 5 for AA confirmation. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Kwame Leroy Brown. I'm also minister of the First Baptist Jubilation Congregation. Now, I'll be conducting your survey today. We've got a couple of questions for you. Question number one. You know what this is? Uh, yeah, that's an Afro pick. Okay, I'm going to need you to demonstrate the proper placement of this uh, utensil. Uh, Judy, bring me my ruler. Well, oh, okay. I put it in my hair. Okay, seems to be standing up okay. Uh, now, next question. Who went and got fired on their day off? Uh, that would be Craig uh, from my favorite movie, uh, Friday. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, finish this statement. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Very good. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Next question. What do you put on your catfish, Tabasco or Louisiana? Uh, that would be Louisiana, sir. All right. You got any in the bag over there? Absolutely, right here. All right, all right, all right. We're going to use some of that on this catfish I got. Uh, bonus question. What kind of shoes are these? Woohoo! I haven't seen those since my great uncle was at the family reunion. Those are uh, Stacy Adams' knob toe with the white stitching. All right. Congratulations. Perfect score. Oh, congratulations, Mr. Kaepernick. You will be getting your proof of black, I mean passport, in seven to ten business days. Uh, okay. And one last thing. We're going to need you to rise for the playing of the national anthem. Oh, man. This is Scoop Jackson, ESPN. You are listening to r and on Sports. And we are back with R and R. Glad to have you. We are glad to have so, you. So, what's happening? Ah, what we got nice. going on so out here? In this sports world? week. Okay. This week. Uh, oh, and, back, and this one more topic. thing. Wait, a minute, hold on. One more thing. What? We need to be happy that Lamar Jackson didn't say, "I'm going to get some scrimps." And, stay scrum. And, I'll, and, and, and we're going to be scrum. Strong. Stay scrum, Louisville. Cause, you know, so, yeah, it could have so been a lot worse. It could have been a whole lot worse. Lot so, worse. Lamar, congratulations for winning the Heisman. Louisville, you got your first Heisman Trophy winner. So, enjoy. Celebrate him. Go. Okay, so, Larry, you had a situation this week where you – and we're in Memphis, Tennessee. So, the Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies um, would be our home NBA team. Yes. So, this week, Larry – you we're gonna came take the back. They were, they were, the Grizzlies played Cleveland Cavaliers twice uh, on a Monday in Cleveland. No, on Tuesday in Cleveland. in Cleveland and then uh, uh, Wednesday in Memphis. Yes. So Larry is looking at taking his f- entire family to see LeBron James and Kyrie. And, yeah. and that's Kevin because Love. I got my youngest and, and son is a LeBron fanatic. And the white since. LeBron, Kevin Love, who right. got his mojo back. Right. So <laughs> he was on the verge of spending a pretty penny for some tickets mm-hmm. to allow them We're going to have toes privilege. on the wood. We was going to have toes on the wood. That's right. That privilege. Be flipping water and bottles. And then he sees... On the uh, Tuesday night game uh, in Cleveland, he, he hears coming. that. Guess who's not making the trip to Memphis? <laughs> Kevin Love. LeBron. Kyrie. 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 
nor Kevin Love. No. So I'm supposed to pay goes, all that Whoa. money. Whoa! So let's talk about NBA teams resting now, I, I superstar do have to players. Memphis left Mark Gasol at home when they traveled to Ain't Cleveland. Ain't nobody coming Tuesday. to the game well, to see Mark know. Gasol. Uh, yeah, Ain't yeah. Coming. I'm they just weren't gonna saying. fill up. They weren't gonna <laughs> fill up the arena in Cleveland with Mark Gasol, <laughs> no. fans, but they will fill it up. Uh, with uh, they did LeBron. fill it up they with people up anticipating with LeBron. LeBron. Talk about that. I mean, is that unfair? Is that um, treating the I am uh, so happy I fans. didn't buy tickets. I know you are. I am so but happy. Think about so, you said, so happy. You said there was a guy that spent $800. Hours, $800. Came drove to see four hours to see his favorite player, LeBron. He could have drove four hours and the other literally, way and gone to And Cleveland. literally On did Tuesday. not get a chance to even see him in Do a suit. Do NBA teams have a respon- any responsibility particularly on the road to... Uh, I, I think I think yeah. Sports Illustrated should reconsider to feel, Sportsman to of the Year. Teams I think they ought to retroactively yeah. pull his Did Sportsman like of the Year uh, because, because the he didn't show up in Memphis, Tennessee to play the daggone game and he was healthy. And he kept his friends at home with him too. Okay. But now, okay, but now I don't think they got a responsibility. Well. I, absolutely, yeah, I do think they do. I think they do. I, I, I think, think they that do. He, he has he has the onus to show up and at least give. But a see, I don't. Way I don't think it's bench. LeBron. I don't think the problem he didn't exists make with LeBron. Decision. And in fact, the coach made. the I don't decision. think he made the decision to rest, but I think that he does get to make the decision as to whether or not he gets on the plane. No, I don't think they get mm. that decision either. Um, I think the fact of the matter is is that. When they only play in these games, especially when it's out of conference. So when they're playing in the Western Conference, they play in the visiting arena one time to take that opportunity of, of fans seeing them in these Western Conference cities and vice versa with West Coast teams like Golden State going to East Coast teams or Eastern Conference teams. Mm-hmm. I think there needs to be some kind of commitment to make sure the stars suit up. Now, whether that means they take off at home as opposed to they take off the game before. But they need to do something that will allow these fans that are in these other markets, especially out of conference, have an opportunity to see them play and see them perform and and see the best of what the NBA has to offer since they are so limited with the players being in the other conference. Interesting that it happened as the CBA has been agreed upon. So that's not in the conversation right now there's no way to legislate it that's not related that's sneaky he's the first vice president of the players association well i'll tell you i was that saturday a night before i was thrilled to be able to see kevin durant yeah (laughs) and they took a hell that's right clay coming off of clay's uh 60 points and tony allen did tony allen they were in full effect and got beat by the Memphis Grizzlies. Nicely. But that's a whole nother conversation. So, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think they have a responsibility to the fans. I mean, you know, fan, the, the cost of tickets, fans work hard, um, and, and, and it's their enjoyment. I think they should be able to see the team, particularly, particularly the world champions, in full effect, particularly Absolutely. when they're on the road. Absolutely. This is December. Come but on. I yeah. think some of the things that's going to be addressed in the CBA it's is lengthening it. It's lengthening in the season. So and you'd have less, less back to back. Less season and yeah. starting a week earlier, which yeah. will be nice. And they'll be able to eliminate I, I'm some just of the back to back games. We didn't see the old school guys do that. Um, what else is so going on? Jim, in the, Jim Brown and uh, Ray Lewis go see President-elect Donald Trump. Yeah, but okay. Jim Brown, uh, Jim Brown said something to the effect that I fell in love with the guy. Uh-huh. Uh, from a sports fan's That's perspective, TMI. does it does it really matter? Yeah, well, to me, being such a um, adamant civil rights, uh, staunch civil rights supporter as Jim Brown, I think that said a lot coming from him. Okay. Um, uh, it makes me pause for a second as it relates to President, uh, President-elect Trump because – Jim Brown is somebody that I've seen who gave up his career in his health and when he was good and has stuck to it. Has always been in the hoods across America, yeah. really utilizing his celebrity. He's been a guest on an the show. Yeah. He's been he's been on R and R and has really spoken about you know some of the things they did, especially around Muhammad Ali being from Louisville mm-hmm. and their support of Muhammad Ali. I find it hard to believe that if there was not something more to the conversation, I don't think. Um, Jim Brown would make those comments about him falling in love with the guy unless there was something there that to fall in love with. Mm-hmm. So 
uh, I, it makes me take a different look at, at President Trump or uh, President elect Trump, and I got to see what's going to happen. All right. It doesn't Kanye make me feel that. Yeah, no, who knows about Kanye? I don't think Kanye knows. <laughs> well, you know, it was Kanye. Black History Day at Trump Tower. It was Black History Day. Black History, History Day. Yes. Yes. Black, yes. Yes. Black yes. History and, Day at uh, Trump you Tower. Nobody brought him a plate of food, so <laughs> I don't know how real it was. <laughs> so, what do you think about uh, what do you think about Ray Lewis? Ray Lewis had, you know, Ray Lewis had some very glowing things to say about uh, President Elect. Well, yeah. I, what do you I, feel it, being a building the elder statesman of this show? Uh well, you know, I I think that's the opinion. civil rights icon I, I, I that can, you are. I can uh, I can appreciate the hopey changey thing, as Sarah Palin uh, once said. Yeah, she can see I, Russia I, I from mean, her you house. Know, I, I think there is need she for gonna optimism. Get a cabinet position for I think there is need for optimism. Uh, I'm not getting. It's not being reinforced with me, particularly looking at some of the cabinet. Uh, not some of them, most all of the cabinet appointees. Look at but my hey, cabinet. we'll we'll see. We will see. All right, one quick we question for yes. you. We've talked a lot about Dak Prescott and everything. You know, Dallas Cowboys took a L. It sure did. They so did. do you think the Giants think, got their number? Do you apparently. think the yep. the uh, Romo is uh, close to oh no reappearing? Oh, no. oh no. I don't think Romo oh, no. is going to be eleven back and on the two. Field. <laughs> They're eleven and two. Why would he show up again? So if they became eleven and three or eleven and four. Would you then Maybe. expect you're not gonna see? Uh, you're not gonna see you, what you are gonna I, t- look, let me hear you look, say that. Okay, go well, ahead. Here's what I'm say it. Okay. Say it. I'm, say I'm it. Make a proclamation. It. Make a proclamation. It. You will only see Tony Romo this season if something happens to Dak Prescott. Something happens like what? Or, or, Be more or, defensive. Or, or they they're up on somebody in the third or fourth quarter. Uh, Are seven, they gonna give Romo so garbage minutes? Go back, no, go back, to go back to what? <laughs> what, what go back to what, if something happening. You can be in the last what kind five. of things must happen to to Dak Prescott in Injuries. order for Injuries. Injuries. only injury? Yeah. Okay, that's the only way that we're gonna see it. Yeah. America, you heard it right here on on our own sports. And, and before we go to break, happen. and before we go to our eye conversation with the great Scoop Jackson of ESPN. Howard Robinson has said that the only way we will see Tony Romo is if Dak Prescott is hurt. Hold me so to So listen, it. we'll be back right after this. Football fans know some things just go together. Quarterbacks and receivers, face paint and super fans, game days and tailgates. State Farm agent Emerson Abel knows another winning combination, home and auto. Emerson and his team are here to help your life go right when you combine your home and auto insurance, which saves you time and money. So get your home and auto on the same team and score some savings with State Farm agent Emerson Abel, 901 837 Seven seventy four hundred. This is John Hodger, Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Memphis Grizzlies. You're listening to R and R on Sports. Who would I be without my baby? The thought alone might break me, and I don't want to go crazy. But every thought. Welcome back to R and R on Sports and I Conversation, and today we have back with us an old friend, back brother, Mister Robert Scoop Jackson. Scoop, welcome back to R and R on Sports. What's up, fellas? And young lady. What's up? What's up, Scoopy? And future daughter in law. (laughs) (laughs) You got a fine looking family. (laughs) We can talk sports all day. (laughs) Now, uh, so much happening, man, and so much has happened since last we spoke. I think last time we talked, we were talking about World Series and the prospect of the Cubs. Right. Uh, becoming the World Series champions, which is now a reality. Um, yes. Any any update on that? Uh, how you feel as a native Chicagoan? Did you tear the club uh, up? Did they tear the club about up? That? No, no, no. I mean, I, th- I think you saw, you know, when the parade happened, you know, and yeah. I stated before uh, that I felt that this would be the biggest, um, you know, victory in the history of Chicago as far as sports is concerned. And I think just the immediate, you know, just, how the parade turned out, where you had five it was it the seventh largest human gathering in, in the history? I of hadn't the world. seen that stat. Oh, Is that wow. right? The it seventh really? largest it's, it's, gathering of humans. Seventh largest human, yeah, wow. human in the wow. history. <laughs> you know, so you have five million people. And I, I tell people all the time, they're lucky they did it on Friday and didn't wait till Monday. Right. Yeah. And they wanted to do it on Friday before the players got away. But if you gave people more time to get here, I think they won on Wednesday night and then the parade was on Friday. 
Uh-huh. If they had waited until Monday, it been you probably insane. gotta get it right. It would have been insane. So, you know, we in Chicago all soaked it up. We're still soaking it up. Um, and you know, we we've lost. You know, so far since the winter meetings, you know, we lost Chapman and Fowler decided to go to uh, uh, St. Louis, uh-huh. uh, which is gonna you know, you know we gotta get a new leadoff hitter. But we're not afraid of anything. We're not mad about anything. Everybody's still kind of just, um, you know, still still in the hangover state, man. Tell me what you think, of, what you thought about the meeting that they had in the uh, weight room uh, during the rain delay. Well, here's the deal. That's the story. <laughs> I kept telling my my nephew who watched the final game with me and my wife. We sat around and watched the game, but uh, I kept saying that that's the story I want that a great writer, like a great writer, to get their hands on. Okay. Yeah. Um, wouldn't that, be you? That to be, Wouldn't that be you? Wouldn't that be you, though? No, here's, here's, I, I could, but I'd rather have somebody that was there. Oh, Possibly. okay. You know what I'm saying? Possibly. Okay. And if they're not there, you know, a writer of a certain ilk that um, um, maybe uh, it is, um, I'm trying to think of a, a writer who could actually uh, kill it. You know, and I know Gary Smith is retired, but he'd be the perfect person uh-huh. to do that. Um, um but, you know, finding that one writer, and maybe it's a, I don't know if it's even a local writer here in Chicago that has a connection to the team. Because the storyline of the whole game was phenomenal. Yeah. The yeah. storyline exactly. of the whole the, the, game was uh, incredible. The game itself was amazing. Right. You know, yeah. And we all, you know, everybody says it's one of the greatest game sevens. Mm-hmm. If you look at what happened this year, you know, this year in itself has been phenomenal, you know, when it comes down to sports and the climaxes. I just watched that. Absolutely. I was about that watching the, the MLS. You know, final just last week mm-hmm. uh, with Seattle and and, and 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 Toronto that went into uh, penalty kicks. Yep, you right. talk about the you wait the NCAA, the Final Four, right. came down to a last right. shot. Second right. shot, you absolutely. Talk about Cleveland and uh, Golden State Warriors. That series was horrible. That Game Seven was great. Coming yep. back, right. yeah. You know, right. so we can go back and forth to what's happened all this year, and it's been phenomenal that things have come down to that. Uh, but to me, as great as that game was. The crux of the story is what happened in that locker room. That's what right. happened in that weight room. That's right. That's and, right. Um, That's how, made of. Right. But how Jason Haywood, who wasn't able to do anything, you know, all season long. I just didn't want to see during the play. All season long, where he didn't live up to the contract, didn't live up to his, you know, uh, experience on the field. Mm-hmm. You know, basically had a season that was forgettable. Mm-hmm. But he was the one That's right. that earned everything he was worth. Right. In that, and what he what he said, right. Exactly right, 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 and that's that's the the the, the beauty of leadership, uh, and what it means to stay there, and you know, not only just what happened in the locker room, but his story at the centerpiece of that. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you how do you, how do you get to that point where you had that season where you take charge and everybody's listening to you? You yeah. don't know how sports goes. If you're not producing on the field, a lot of times you don't produce off. <laughs> Exactly. But here's a guy who came in with rings and could have lost respect to everybody because he didn't perform all season long. That had everybody in there following him like he was T.D. Jakes. Absolutely. <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> Listen, this you is know, on our this is on our own sports, and we're speaking with Scoop Jackson, Chicago great Scoop Jackson, ESPN famous as well. So, Scoop, I want to talk some basketball. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know what I know. I know that Carmelo Anthony is never going to run the triangle. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So what, do we do we see uh, Carmelo Anthony in a different uniform next year, Scoop, in your opinion? I, 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 to me, it depends on what happens in the playoffs with the Knicks. Um, you know, I, th- I think if you, you know, look at where they're sitting right now, you know, uh, and, and, and if the playoffs started right now, you know, what – they possibly be able to do as a three seed, which is, you know, something I don't think they expected. I thought they'd make it, you know, but I thought they'd think, you know, at the beginning of the season they'd be in maybe the bottom half of the playoff run. But right now they're a three seed. And if they find themselves, you know, in the conference finals, you know, against a Cleveland, or if you, if they find themselves beating like a Toronto, or, you know, getting further than they expected, then I don't see Carmelo leaving because that's going to make them, you know, that's going to allow them to build off of something. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. going to give Jeff Hornacek another year to get comfortable. It won't be his just his infancy season there. It won't be just his rookie season there. He'll know the players. The players will understand his system better because it worked the first time because it got him further than they expected. So all of those things go into play. You know, but, you know, if they underachieve in the playoffs, 
if like the second half of the season they start bottoming out and they go from the top four to like barely making it in the AC and then, you know, not saying they don't get past the first round, but if they get swept right. by somebody in the playoffs, right. then that changes everything. And then we're looking at, well, you know, now we got to make changes because this didn't go right. And you're still looking at the fact that Derrick Rose is the way this is. He, he's not signed, so he's still got to – he's gone after this. Yeah. And I think Joe Noah is the same thing. So you got to look at players who may not be there. You may not even want to resign. Right. But to me, it all breaks down to what happens to the Knicks in the playoffs. Now, you know, you all know that playoffs are about matchups. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, if, if the Knicks style of basketball doesn't work against a certain team, then, you know, that's something they need to look into. And also, we can't have this conversation about Melo being there. If, if, if Hornacek doesn't, you know, overperform, or if Phil Jackson, let's go deeper, if Phil Jackson continues his, and I use this word very loosely, meddling. That <laughs> oh, <laughs> was very PC. And, and, and it winds up having an effect, or they believe it winds up having an effect on the team, like in the exit interviews and the players say, you know what, Phil Jackson became a headache. Mm-hmm. Historically, we know James Dolan is, is nah, not afraid playing. Of, spending, of spending money right. and to have somebody go. Right. I think and Phil Jackson a, has been a headache, a though. Huh? I think Phil Jackson has been a headache. He has been, but he has a pedigree that nobody else has. True. Right. See, that's right. the thing. Absolutely. And, 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 and as an owner, you're like, well, he's part of the cachet of this whole thing. Now, if he overstays his welcome with the fan base, if he overstays his welcome with the team, then you got to let him go. But he, you could put up with his headache. He's only been in two years. You could put up with his headache when you're dealing with injuries, when you're dealing with coaching drama and situations where that's not right because the whole Derek Fisher thing was, like, horrible. Right. Yeah. You know, you, you know they, you had all type of things that, as an owner, you have to take consideration when you're looking at somebody like Phil Jackson. But the and Derek this Fisher. Is the first time doing this. Well, Derek. hold on. Let's not get in that. Let's not get into Derek Fisher because that's some stuff that's all the way in the back yeah, and we I don't care nothing about that, it. That was Phil Jackson <laughs> trying to make the triangle happen. Yeah, well, he's always going to try to right, make the always, triangle, but, but triangle happen. It, so is it on Carmelo Anthony to learn Phil Jackson's system or is it Do up we to have Phil to Jackson? Sit up and listen to, about Carmelo. We don't I'm really care that question. much about Carmelo. Only person can't do anything about Carmelo is. Larry, you might, you might want Larry. to start winning. <laughs> if, if, they, if they start winning, you might want to. You might want to start caring about Carmelo. If you start winning, I, 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 know what you're saying, I understand. I understand. And speaking yeah, of winning, and you mentioned the fan base, I think the uh, I'm not there. You are. I think the New York fans are in an interesting, stra- strange sense of depression. I think that they, they've been I mean, in depression yeah, for a long time. I know, time. I know, but they've been loud about it in the past. I don't see the same sense of outrage. Uh, via uh, I- either Knicks fans or Giants fans, as they have um, have been in the past, I've seen them, but, well, and I don't know I, why. I, I don't know, but why would they? I mean, this is a team that once again is a three seed as we speak. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're only three games over five hundred, but they're a three seed. You yeah. just look at the beginning of the season. They didn't know if Derrick Rose was going to be held. They didn't know if anything was going to work. You right. can't bet on Rose. This team was a bottom feeder. So here's the thing. The At the beginning feeder. of the season, <laughs> see, everybody in New York was like, look, we think the Knicks are going to make the playoffs. That was, that was across the board. We think the Knicks are going to make the playoffs. Right now, they're sitting at three feet. Why are you expecting them to complain? Uh, <laughs> <This is> Philly. <laughs> they're not Philadelphia fans. Come on, man. <laughs> what do you think of LeBron in a Cubs uniform? Uh, Did that well, make you happy? Boy, you know what? I give him credit for owning up and doing it full throttle. Absolutely. He lost the bet, he, and, and he manned up and came. I didn't expect I thought he was going to wear a jersey. He came full he, throttle. Full. He wore the whole Customized. Man. Customized. Right. And speaking yeah, of all uniform. Dope. And speaking of full, th- speaking of full throttle, throttle right. we're gonna yep. come, we are going to come. We got to come back on the other side of this with more Scoop Jackson full throttle on R and R on Sports. <laughs> Football fans know some things just go together. 
quarterbacks and receivers, face paint and super fans, game days and tailgates. State Farm agent Emerson Abel knows another winning combination, home and auto. Emerson and his team are here to help your life go right when you combine your home and auto insurance, which saves you time and money. So get your home and auto on the same team and score some savings with State Farm agent Emerson Abel, 901 837 7400. Hey, this is Dr. J. Hi, this is Freaka Ketchum. This is John Hogger, Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Memphis Grizzlies. Tim Brown, NFL Hall of Fame and Tuck T. You are listening to R&R on Sports. This is Willie O'Ree, the first black player to play in the National Hockey League, and you are listening to R&R on Sports. And we're back. On our arm sports, high conversation with uh, Scoop Jackson. Hey man, can you say our name? Put some respect on our name. It's R and R, not R and R. It's R and R on sports. Put some respect on our name, man. You hear me? I, I, anyway, I we're back it. with uh, Scoop Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, uh, let wait, do this. I'll say something about Carmelo Anthony. I'm just messing around. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do a uh, fans guide. Give give our listeners a um, just an overview of your thoughts on the CBA, the Collective Bargaining Agreement. Uh, Who won? In, in in every in everyday kind of terms. Uh, so just the regular guy. We know the players took an L last time. Yeah. So 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 who won this year? It's Talk time. about it. Well, here's the deal. I think I think from here, I'll do it the best way I can. I think from a winners and losers standpoint, I think automatically Adam Silver is a winner because he didn't allow anything to get out of hand or put the league in jeopardy of going into a work stoppage. And we both know that this is something David Stern had not done in a long time. Yeah. So this is the win for Adam Silver and basically setting the standards of like, look, this is a new day, this is a new league. I'm running it, you know, I'm running it differently, and I'm going to make it work. Mm-hmm. You know, because not a, you know, the owners may not be happy, but Adam Adam Silver has made it clear from the time he set foot into that position of taking over for David Stern that he he's going to do what he feels is in the best interest of the league and not in the best interest of the owners. You know, David Stern always felt that he worked for the owners, and then, so that different approach. To commissioning is, is is evident since he walked in is evident right now in his deal. So I think he's you know clearly a winner. Um, do I think the players collectively are uh, winners in this? I, I think he can be split fifty fifty. Um, I think from the standpoint that they agree to the money that they're going to get, the extensions they're going to get, you know that uh, some teams are going to be able to get to keep players there. I think is good. Uh, I Mention the money. The fact that it's Mention huh? the money. Well, mention the money. Well, it's, it's, well, it's, instead of going into details about the money, here's it's one thing that, that I think the one right. But here's the one <laughs> thing that I think needs to be understood, and it really wasn't a part of the agreement, but it was because I put it from a language standpoint, it's not a part of the agreement because uh-huh. it's not connected to the deal. But it loomed big and was in part of the conversation. I think that's why the players settled so easily on this, and that's the TV deal, you know, and that. You add that to already the money that was already coming from the CBA, that's $24 billion over nine years. Mercy. Wow. $24 billion over nine years. So here's the thing. Even though it's not directly related to it in the language of the CBA, the one thing you don't want to have is a public relations nightmare. And if you're the players in the Players Association, if they actually challenge the CBA deal, the media would have had a field day right. by throwing in that television contract money as part of what they didn't agree to. Well, there is you a- can't have a league, a league of 85% black people that, has a, that, that, that the public feels or fans feel got a problem with $24 billion being spread over nine years. Right. <laughs> that yeah, would have been right. You, yeah. you do have one player that, that's making some tweets as to his... Uh, He's not so enamored with the CBA. Yeah, Draymond Green Dray- seems Draymond's to be. Draymond's not right. happy. Yeah. Okay, Carmelo also said, not to bring Carmelo back up, but he said the same thing. To, um, um, what you call it? On, um, he said he was, was skeptical they would reach a deal. Right, right. 
And I think, here's the thing. They are, I get both of their sides. And, and this is what I was about to say. This is the reason I split my answer on who won, and it's from a player standpoint, 50 50. At no point in the last maybe 20 years has it, have the players ever felt comfortable with trusting ownership. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but them to just automatic, and these are the same people. Most ownership outside of the uh, Clippers has not changed hands. So these same owners are the same owners you had to deal with on the last CBA. They're the same owners you had to deal with on the previous yep. CBA. Yep. These are the same owners that always scream that they don't have any money, that they blame the player salary. All this stuff goes across the board. So to all of a sudden, in the initial stages, like this, this wasn't even deep conversations. In the initial stages, to just take these owners at their word and say, here, I get from a player standpoint, like, no, why should we trust them? Like, you know. We, we need to go deep and find out, you know, what they what they got up their sleeves, what right. they're really trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I also think that this leads to what I was saying about Adam Silver. This is our you know, sports, I, and we're speaking right. with the great Scoop Jackson, ESPN personality. Go ahead, Scoop. Yeah, I think Adam Silver. I think Adam Silver had a lot to do with leveraging this thing getting done so quickly because the owners didn't want it to get to a point where they didn't feel they had a leg to stand on because they don't have that person on their side they, that they've had in the past, David Stern, mm-hmm. looking out for their best interest. Well, you know, some else, Scoop, I think Michael Jordan, they said Michael Jordan played quite a role in helping to ease the relationship between the players and ownership. I mean, have you heard some of those similar things? And if so, what kind of stories have you heard come through your uh, lines no, of communication? I've heard the same thing. Um and I would have to go further. I don't have any other information outside of what you just said and what I just read. And I don't think anybody's gone in depth. But it'd be interesting to me um, to see Michael Jordan exercise that type of power as being one of the new owners in, you know, the NBA. You have ownership teams that have been around forever. You know, so it'd be interesting to me to see somebody like Mark Cuban or somebody like, you know, the Bus family in L.A., mm-hmm. or somebody like Jerry Ryan or here in Chicago, or somebody like James Dolan. Uh, definitely, you know, you know somebody in, um, um, uh, 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 in, in Washington, you know, who, you know, the whole organization has no respect for Michael Jordan's GM status. You know, his ability to general manage the team. That's why they right. let him go. Right. It would be interesting to me that Michael Jordan has influence over them when on the same field. <laughs> so I think, and I, you know, Hey, I would I would have to really see what he said and what power he holds, especially in Charlotte, when Charlotte really hasn't won anything. They're pretty successful. But, you know, there's nothing that Michael Jordan has done in his tenureship as owner of the Charlotte Hornets that will make me believe that collectively, you know, 29 other owners are all of a sudden going to let him influence them, and they've been doing that a lot longer than he has and been a lot more successful. Now, speaking, you know? of, speaking of that, Scoop, while we're talking about respect and gravitas and all of that, I'm, a, I'm going to ask you about somebody else. Do you think that we will see Patrick Ewing become a head coach in the NBA? I think so. You do? I think Patrick, yeah, because I think he's given his time. Definitely to, that. But, I mean, but, does, but wait, wait, wait. go ahead. Well, what I'm saying is that he's done it and he hasn't been, he hasn't gone about it in a way that if, turn people off to him from a personality standpoint. And, and, and the reason I say that is I'm using Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as an example. Mm-hmm. You know, who sat on the bench and many teams was involved in other things trying to get a head coaching job. But his personality and who he is rubbed a lot of people, even players, the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And it was about his ability to communicate and get along and relate that was a big reason he was never given an opportunity to coach, I don't think, in the NBA. Um, but, but Jabbar has always been that type of person. He's, he's very educated in thought yeah. and very secure in thought. Yeah. Right. But at times that could come off as not just being aloof, but as being almost you looking, being, being looked at as an elitist. Right. And, well, Jab- and, and, and he doesn't, Patrick doesn't have that. Well, you know why, what I'm saying? So I think that's what he'll be given a chance. Why ha- has... Um, that part of his personality and, 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 and his experience and all of that not allowed him to transcend um, assistant 
at uh, status at this point? That's a great question. I, I, I don't know. Um, I we in inter- Memphis interviewed him yeah. this summer. Yeah. Yeah. Did they say publicly how the interview went? Well, you well. Know. I don't know. No, they say, yeah, they'll say it. They'll say it went well. Say well. No one, you no one to throw quiet. anybody like, under the bus. He's not doing yeah. media. He's not. I, I've chased him for a long time because I met him at Summer League, and he mm. just does not like media, media-related media stuff. So I he's quiet. I think they put him in this perceptional box kind of thing, and, and, and I'm afraid, and this is personal opinion only, I'm afraid that he's going to be hard-pressed because I, I don't think they see him in a head coaching light. Yeah. Yeah. I can mm-hmm. see that. I could see him doing some not commentating like Rick Mahorn is doing. Which has nothing whatsoever to do with his capability. Right. Well, this is R&R yeah, on Sports, and we're speaking with, no, it's not. with uh, Scoop Jackson of ESPN. Scoop, you know, we had a big thing uh, the last few days, and we've been talking about this issue of uh, star players not showing up on the road. What's your yeah. take on that? And, and I mean – the other day, I had a situation where I almost bought a lot of tickets for the family to go see uh, LeBron and the likes in, in – um, A LeBron-less Cavs. Yeah, Le- shoot, not only LeBron-less, but yeah. Kyrie-less, Kyrie-less. Yeah, that's and Loveless yeah. as well. I yeah. mean, you're you talking – Yeah, you can't – Go ahead. Yeah, you can't do that. You know, you can't, you can't take, take all three and let them sit out. You know, so that, that, that to me is a problem. I'm glad – I'm almost glad that they did that because now I think we can really get serious about this conversation. I think teams over the course of the last couple of years, especially San Antonio, which I understood, you know, played it to a point where it wasn't up to national conversation status. But what Cleveland just did, when you sit all three at the same time for rest in December, (laughs) I think now you're bringing the situation to a situation where, yes, I think it's fair for us to make this national conversation. Mm -hmm. Did they straight up um, stay home? Hmm? They straight yeah, up stayed they, home. Yeah, yeah they, they did stay home. And I, 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 don't, I don't know what Adam Silver is going to do about that. You know, and I don't know how you legislate that. Yeah. Well, Silver yeah. said let them rest at home. You know, let, if they're going to yeah. sit out games, let them sit out home games where they play 41 yeah, times just, a year. I think they're just looking at schedule. I think they're really just looking at schedule and say, okay, you know what? It's protecting you know, the we're, investment. We're, we're, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but okay. But here's another thing that I think people don't take into consideration. You're talking about some of these guys are playing four games in five days right. and things like that and, and, and three and five and, and six and, and nine. I mean, that's a lot of load to – Okay, but here's the deal. Here's, one, then you can manage their minutes differently if that's a concern. You know, sure. and explain to me – here's the thing. Explain to me or show me, because this is one thing I haven't seen, and maybe you all have seen I have not seen Show me the evidence that what you're doing now has a direct effect right. on how your team and how your right. players perform right. in the playoffs right. and run the championship. Right. 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 I have okay. not seen any data anywhere. And it's all been just talk. And I've heard a lot of NBA executives be like, I don't, I don't know what's even going on here, but I trust these people know what they're talking about. To me, at some point, I need to see data. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. That proves to me that what you are doing is going to have a direct, you know, Reflection on winning a championship or not winning the championship because of that. So wait a minute, you saying are you saying that you've turned into an analytics guy now? I'm not an analytics. I thought guy, you was a, about feel. I thought you was about I feel, about and, feel. and it was the eyeball test. I'm challenging, I'm challenging analytics. <laughs> I'm like, give me the results. I want to know what they gave Vince Carter. <laughs> yeah, Vince Carter done found a pat in the you. Yes, baby. Yes. <laughs> well, listen. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. And so we're talking about something that they have never given an answer to. No team in the NBA has shown any correlation between sitting LeBron, you know, or or resting uh, Kyrie, resting Kevin Love, and how that benefits. And they won because of that in the playoffs. Well, at the end of the day, it's about the playoffs. It's really all about the playoffs. This is just like the prelim. (laughs) <laughs> well, I got some data. I got some data. You got the clock, the clock got some on data. the wall says that we have no more time. Oh, really? So, <laughs> and we got to say well, What about your cataracts problem? Hey, you, man, you, you I, see I, I, I have no problem Steve seeing Gert, this clock. Steve Kirk has sent you some uh, baked goods. <laughs> <laughs> Helped my vision immensely. Absolutely. Scoop, we want to thank you for being back with us on r and We always love having you. And I uh, look forward to In the time. next time. 
Let's make it soon. All righty. All righty. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back with more R&R on sports. How about that, Larry? That you got nice. it right. Right after this. And we are back just in time to uh, say goodbye. And, uh, every time I say that, Merry it Christmas. triggers Shalom. various and sundry goodbyes. Feliz Navidad. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Peace where in they, the Middle East. Where they try to Ooh. impress you guys with uh, how they can say goodbye. But um, we are impressive. I want to say Sayonara. that. I want to say that um, this, this year has been incredible for us with regard to uh, See you later, JC. <laughs> Happy New Year. Meeting Love and interviewing <laughs> phenomenal people. <laughs> and uh, in this show, we've had um, somebody that's been with us uh, for some years and is there whenever we need him. And we want to thank uh, Scoop Jackson, always there, absolutely, always you, there. Scoop. Our uh, listeners love uh, hearing him, and his perspectives are incredible. Y'all catch him on uh, ESPN, so he's got some great insight and some fantastic things. To we need say to get more of our happy. folks from undefeated on, man. You know, we need yeah. to bring them yeah. back. You know, and get them around. Yeah, a little bit. They, you know, and, they're and doing how, some great how work. They, how they've been doing? They've been doing they're great. Doing we talked to uh, we talked to them from the start, from yeah. the jump back yeah. in yeah. when doing about well. May. Street great, talk. Yeah, yeah, great, great insight uh, on different perspectives of sports. Uh, we got a, cra- uh, a crackpot staff. I mean, I'm really impressed with what yeah. they're writing and how they're writing. I the, agree. Cr- the undefeated.com is a is yeah, a undefeated.com. Y'all, yeah. y'all check it out. Y'all check yeah. it out. Anything so else? I, well, what's up with you with all this low energy and stuff, man? It's the holiday. You about to get turned up. All right. Get turned. Get turned. You got some eggnog. Get turned. We got some nog. I got some man of Get turned. Oh, yeah. Get turned. Boy, I had to add that. In. Oh. I'm gonna bring you some. They give you that. Bring they some give you that. They give no, your kids. Bring you some Rogaine. Some Manischewitz. Yeah, yeah. We do. Before and they then, get old enough to really drink. Oh, uh, you say, we here, do? taste this. Well, you, with that, we do uh, something y'all do, else. Y'all do after that, that in the Jewish community. We uh, we start them like seven days after birth. Quit. With some cutting with involved. One? Yeah. Woo. Really? Oh, with some cut. Oh, and, oh, and, when they get the circumcision. Oh, no. That's that's when the wine starts. Y'all give them a little. Yeah. That's getting the kids how drunk. How much you Absolutely. learn on this show. <laughs> and then we clip them. See how much cultural competence you <laughs> get like, on this show. In your living room. <laughs> Jewish people serve the kid wine yep. before. Circumcision. Sir, oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Hey, you need to be a little turnt. We, That's why we didn't I get any wine. No. I didn't anyway. Well, you know, we always been oppressed. Hey. They, they probably also didn't do yours in your mama's living room. Y'all, y'all listen, uh, have a great week. We're going to be back. I hope you're having great holidays. Uh, stay well, stay, stay safe, and be back with us. Stay next. slick. Stay slick. Stay slick, too. Absolutely. Back on r and on Sports next week. Y'all be cool. Make sure to subscribe and rate r and Go to your podcast provider. We're there. Peace. R&R on Sports is recorded live at LPI Studios in the heart of Memphis, Tennessee. Web designer Daniel Coates. Executive producer Larry Robinson. Written by Howard Robertson and produced by Reggie Fine. R&R on Sports. Part of the Kutsukian Network.